I want to speak to us a little bit this morning about favor with God. That's a, that's a tough one. How do I get God's favor in my life? And it's kind of a, a thin line between being in the perfect will of God or the permissive will of God. Sometimes we think we're in the perfect will of God, but really we're in the permissive will of God. And I know at times that I feel like I've been in the perfect will of God, and I know there's times I've just been in the permissive will of God. So I want to talk a little bit about that. I want to take a, a passage of scripture. You would think, is he preaching a Christmas message? No. Uh, but it talks about Mary when the angel Lord came to her and, and, and told her that she was going to be carrying Jesus uh, and that she would be impregnated and that she would still be a virgin and that she would deliver the Messiah. So there's a passage of scripture. I'm going to read in Luke, the first chapter, the 30th verse. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, for thou hast found favor with God. Now, I want to get to the point that where I can find favor with God. How about you? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So, how, how do we get there? How, how do we get to the point that we truly find favor with God? So, let's look at a few things here. And I'm going to be talking about something here that in a minute... I don't know how y'all going to like it, but you might like it. I hope you do. If you don't, you got to love me anyway, because the Bible says you can't love your brother who you have seen. How can you love a father who you haven't seen? Come on, everybody give me a smile. I want to make sure y'all love me enough. Okay. Because I think it's important sometimes that we, we look, at, look at things and try to understand why we're not finding the favor of God. It's an important issue. First of all, we must believe and trust God. Amen. Providence of God. And what does that word providence mean? It means divine, divine guidance. guidance. We've got to be guided by God. And we have to trust and to obey Him. Now, being God, having God lead our lives is a tough thing sometimes because we like to lead our own life. How many like to be in control? Uh, I thought I saw everybody in here. How many like being out of control? Well, there's some that does, I'm sure, but I don't. I, I like to know that I'm in control of everything that I do. Uh, sometimes she just says, you're just totally out of control, you know. <laughs> so i got to listen to my wife because really she is the one that helps me. So I have to learn how to trust and obey God and, and allow God to lead me. But trust and obey God, everything in my life is a tough thing to do sometimes. Right. It's hard because i got to figure things out my own way. Now, my way might be different than your way. But what works for me might not work for you. And what works for you might not work for me. But I kind of like to do it my way sometimes. Well, this is not Burger King. I can't really do it my way. i got to do it God's way. Isn't it Burger King says you have it your way? I thought so. So anyway, in Hebrews, the fifth chapter, the ninth verse, it said, And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obeyed him. So we have to learn to obey Christ. 11 and 6 says, But without faith it's impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is. Amen? Amen. And that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. So I've, I've got to seek Him. And He's going to reward me, or He's going to bless me, or I'm going to find favor with God. And when I find favor with God, everything works so good in my life. Have, have you ever noticed that? When everything's going good in your life and God is number one on your mind, how everything works. Even when situations come up you don't know how to handle, God takes care of it for you. Have you, you know what I'm talking about? Have you been there? Amen. If you haven't been there, you need to get there because it's a good place to be. Amen. So, when all these things happen, we must be willing to be used by God. So, that means submission. Now, that word submit is a tough word, isn't it? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Everybody, it's tough. Because she was not going to submit to me, and I'm not going to submit to her, but together we submit to each other. That's a good way to handle that one. <laughs> but if I want to mess her up a little bit and, and fire her up a little bit, I just say, hey, you just do what I say. Yeah. Does that work, men? No. <laughs> I love some. Yeah. It is not going to work. 
Probably the other one. Now, the reason I'll submit sometimes quicker is because, no, I'm not going there. Let me just move on. So anyway, we've got to learn to submit ourselves unto God and resist the devil. That's what the scripture says. And he will flee from you. But we've got to be willing to allow God to use us. So when we don't allow God to use us, sometimes, I, 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 hate, I hope this terminology is not too strong, but some Christians sometimes get mean. Uh-oh, you know I'm going to be in trouble for this day or so. But i got eight points I want to bring out. Is that okay? Because I want us to walk in the favor of God. Hmm. Church members are mean sometimes, or they're not walking in the favor of God because the church has sometimes allowed them to be that way. Now, to be honest with you, I have been blessed. And the churches that we have served as pastor, most of my members have been great people. Sometimes, though, I remember some church members could be me. I remember our second year of pastoring, we walked into the church and we didn't know anybody. We knew there was a division there. We didn't know much about it, but we knew there was a division that was going on. Sheila comes up and sits down in the seat. And this lady comes in and says, you must be the the new pastor's wife, and she said, well, yes, I am. She said, well, you're going to have to move. You're in my seat. <laughs> you see what I'm talking about? <laughs> and all that year long, they weren't very spiritual, a lot of them. And they, they were very rough on us. And I remember one day I walked off the pulpit and I said, God, can I just get two of them on the way out? You forgive me? And the Lord said, no, you got to love them. <laughs> but sometimes people can get that way. So listen to this. We need to understand all church members are still people. But that's not an excuse to be mean. No. You see, if you get mean, you can't be in the favor of God, right? right. I want you all to remember, that's what I'm staying at. It's not an excuse to be mean, though it's an admission of reality. Even saved people sometimes act like sinners for the right buttons get pushed. Right. How many know what buttons you can't push? Uh -huh. Now there's a few things that I can, I can deal with a lot of things, but I can't stand a finger in my face. Can anybody have that? Uh -huh. Huh? And, and there's just certain little, how many has got little buttons that gets pushed that makes you mad quickly? Oh, yeah. Can we be honest? Yeah. Yeah, I know. How many ever just got mad? Boom! Well, sometimes we as Christians, that happens to us. And the right buttons get pushed. Uh -huh. And when those right buttons get pushed sometimes, we get mad and it takes us totally out of the favor of God. Because that becomes more of an important issue than saying, you know, and I've tried to do this. I really have. I, when, when that happens, sometimes people like to do that, and I think they do it because they know I don't like it, so they agitate me with it. Right. I just grab their finger and I say, isn't that a beautiful finger? <laughs> or I'll stop praying God you. Uh, but sometimes that happens and some people get upset and stab the favor of God because of non-believers even Jesus had one in his immediate group of 12 who was never a believer and I doubt our churches would ever do better than Jesus did lost people will always act like lost people eventually even when they don't think they're lost why? many are undisciplined too many church too many churches bring people into local congregations, but they do nothing to disciple them. And you know what? When I was reading this, I, my fingers came back to me that we've got to do a better job discipling people who have just accepted Jesus in their life. Amen? Amen. We've got to let them know what they're going to face and how the enemy is going to come at them. Amen? We've got to teach them that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Amen? Amen. And a lot of times, new, babe, new Christians, new believers remain babe in Christ even when they've been in the church for years. Wow. And sometimes people get out of the favor of God because they carry a lot of burdens. Wow. Often we don't know what burdens other bear because we don't choose because we choose to carry our own burdens ourselves. And we don't realize what's happening to other people. How about the father who can't find a job? The parent whose child had just been arrested. The teen whose parents have just split up. The faithful member who is being abused. Sometimes the anguish of life weighs so heavy on us that our tempers are short and our words are volatile. Sometimes we just get caught up with everything around us. Instead of seeking God to help to guide us through it, 
we lose favor with God because all these things are happening in our lives. And when things happen in our lives, we can't see nothing because that becomes a major focus of our lives. And when I was putting this together about the favor of God, I, I, I looked at me. I didn't look at anybody else but me. And so when I'm speaking, I'm speaking to me. So, if, I mean, if it affects you, you can have it, but if not, I'm speaking to me. I look back how I used to blame everybody for everything in my life. Has anybody ever done that? Yeah. I blame everybody for every situation in my life. I blame my parents. I blame my friends. I blame the environment. I blame this. If things would have been better, I could have been this. I could have done that. And then one day God spoke to me. And even as a, after a Christian, I still carry some of that. But one day God spoke to me and said, when are you going to take responsibility for who you are and quit blaming everybody else and just look at yourself? Because, because in some sense, I was being mean. I couldn't walk in the favor of God because I couldn't see God through all that. All I wanted to do was find fault with somebody else so I didn't have to look at who, who I had become. Wow. So, and some people we find that are given authority far too early. I'm not sure if Sheila and I weren't given that much authority too early. We was young when we started pastoring. Boy, we had a lot of things to learn, didn't we? Whew. When our churches get positioned, those who haven't yet grown, as many churches do that, granted position on the basis of years in the church rather than our maturity in the faith. We put, ooh, that's tough, isn't it? We shouldn't be surprised when they fight to protect their toys or protect that position because that's kind of what kids do. But sometimes we don't teach. And then we don't teach them how to walk in the favor of God and allow God to bless them with the job that God has given them to do. I know that sometimes I, I, I think about it. God, why did you ever call me to be a pastor? You know where I came from? You know how I got this southern slang? And my words don't come out real good sometimes. I understand, but y'all might not. She would have told me I had Larry Bonnie because I come up with my own stuff sometimes. That's, <laughs> that's what us southern boys do, I guess. I don't know. And then when you're raised in North Carolina and your parents raise you, when they, when they use words like, go down to the heist. Yeah. And they, they got a whole different language. And I thought North Carolina was bad, but when I walked, when I met some people from the, uh, the outer banks of North Carolina, ooh, that was worse yet. I couldn't understand a word they were saying, but they understood themselves. And they go to Louisiana and talk to some cages. And I'm saying, well, why would you even use someone like me? And the Lord would speak to me and said, because I got you right where I want you at. And you know what the Lord told me one time? He said, when you grow up, and when you quit trying to say that I can't use you, and when you quit blaming everybody up, when you just start trusting me, I will bless you. And folks, I'm here to tell you today, when you walk in the favor of God, you will be blessed. Amen? Amen. You will be blessed. And that's what we want you to do is to be blessed, but God wants to bless you. Amen. Wow. So let me, I got a couple more here. Let me, let me get this here. Some are living in sin. For anyone who's a true believer, the conviction of sins cut deeply. But that doesn't always result in immediate repentance. Church members who remain in their sin for any length of time turn their convictions on others. Uh-oh. Kind of like what I did. Judging somebody else at least briefly turns the attention from them. So when you do that, you can't walk in the favor of God. It's kind of like what Adam did to Eve. When the Lord said, where you're at, Adam said, the woman made me do it. I put it in the lady's turn, the woman? He didn't say, the woman? No, you men don't do that. Hey, you don't even fall for that one. But had to blame someone else to take the heat off himself. Wow. And I got looking at that, and I began to think, Lord, let me get rid of some of these things. And then there's just some people that have anger issues. Ooh. Maybe you know people like that. They're great one minute, but they grew up like a volcano the next. They often quickly repent, but they get no help in breaking the pattern. 
You know what someone told me one time that really had an anger problem, and I, and I tried to sit down and talk with them about it? Well, my mama was that way, my daddy was that way, and that's just the way God created me. Now think about that for a moment. Could walk in the blessings of God, could walk in the favor of God, because they couldn't trust God, they couldn't submit to God. As James said, this is what James said again, submit yourself therefore to God and resist the devil and he will flee from God. In other words, we have to allow God to use us. If we got all these things going in our lives, and these things we can't get rid of, how can God use us? Now, last night, uh, last Wednesday night, we had a fantastic Bible study. And we had to find it back. I told Sheila, I said, keep growing. I have to come back into the chapel. I, I, I'm liking it out there, but we had a lot of folks came in, and, and, and the Bible study was just amazing. I sat and I kept listening. And I kept listening to different things that were saying. We were talking about being prisoners. And we as Christians can be prisoners. You know that? Yeah. There's some things in our lives we can hold on to that keeps us from being blessed. But Sandy's son, he made a statement. Well, Sandy made this statement. He said, when people are not open-minded, in other words, open their mind to see what's in front of them and to realize what God wants, and they close their mind to everything, then they're prisoners. And I thought about that. If I want the favor of God to work in my life, not to sin against His Word, that's not what I'm saying, folks. But if I want the Word of God to work in my life, i got to open this Word and read it and, 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 and put it in my life and live it to the best of my ability and watch the favor of God begin to work in my life. You know what happened when the favor of God began to work in your life? That thing that was laid in me for, it says 2011, it's dead today. Why? Because God touched it. It wasn't all the medication. It was God that touched it and moved it out of the way. Folks, let me tell you something. My knee that I was going to have surgery on, and, and they said I couldn't wait too long. God reached out here one Sunday morning and touched my knee and I'm walking with no problems at all with it. Let me tell you something. Why? Because I'm walking in the favor of God. When you walk in the favor of God, great things happen in your life. Now, do I have struggles? Yes, I have struggles. Do I fight battles? Yes, I fight battles. I'm just like you. But because I've learned to submit myself, therefore, unto God. And I've learned to resist the enemy. You see, when the devil tells me I can't, I'm a stubborn man. I just tell the devil I can't. It's kind of like when I tell she she can't do something. I know. <laughs> she's going to do it. <coughs> and she's going to show me she can do it. And she says, right, you just do that, so I'll do it. Right. And sometimes I do. I'll be honest with you, I do. Yeah. But we come home yesterday, they had the yard sale over here. And, and, and she does this, this deep cleaning. And I knew what was happening with the floors. And she had other things to do. I said, honey, I'll do the floors. That meant I had to sweep them. Then I had to get down on the floor with my hands and knees with a towel and dry them. And I had to run the towel the right way. So I had no streaks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, 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 but I was being submissive to her. Why was I being submissive to her? Because her back was hurt. She had been working I want to do what was right. Sometimes, folks, we got to do some hard things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we got to do some things that we don't. But when we're submissive to God, the blessings of God will come. And you know what? It made my wife happy. Uh -huh. And if she's happy, uh -huh. I'm happy. <laughs> and if I'm happy, the two dogs are happy. Right. I mean, everybody's happy. Right. <laughs> Amen? I think even the Sith fans are happy. You know? Because everybody's happy. But you know what? If we do what we need to do for God, He's going to take care of us. Let me get this one. A young man applied for a job as a farmhand. When the farmer asked for his qualifications, he said, I can sleep when the wind blows. This puzzled the farmer, but he liked the young man and hired him. A few days later, the farmer and his wife were awakened in the night by a violent storm. They quickly began to check things out to see if it was secure. They found that the shutters of the farmhouse had been securely fastened. A good supply of logs had been set next to the fireplace. The young man slept soundly. The farmer, the farmer and his wife then inspected their property. They found that the farm tools had been placed in the storage shed, safe from all elements. The barn was properly locked. Even the animals were calm. All was well. 
The farmer then understood the meaning of the young man's words. I can sleep when the wind blows. Because the farmhand did his work loyalty and faithfully, when the skies was clear, he prepared for the storm. When it broke, so when the wind blew, he was not afraid. He could sleep in peace. Think about that today. I know some of us have got some good days. And while things are good, we still need to praise God and give Him the glory. Amen? Amen. We need to still be in the Word. We need to still seek Him and walk Amen. in His favor. Because when the storm comes, we're going to be able to go through it without any problems at all. Amen? Amen. Just as this young man said, I can sleep when the wind blows. What are you saying? When the storms come, I'm going to be able to sleep through it because I already made a preparation. When you make the preparation in your life, when the storms of this world hit you, you're going to be all right. Amen? Because you are in the favor of God. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Yes. I love it. Praise the Lord. I'm going to use a Kenny statement. Isn't that fun? <laughs> I'm going to use mine. Isn't it good? That's that southern stuff. Isn't it? She always gets on my southern stuff because stuff, I get the words and the words. It's kind of messed up sometimes. See, there was nothing dramatic or sensational in this young man, this young boy's preparation. He just faithfully did what was needed each day. I'm going to ask you a question. How many of us pray every day? How many of us read our word every day? How many of us talk to the Father every day? You see, if we're doing the things faithfully every day, when the storms of this life comes, we won't be mean. We won't be trying to blame someone else. We won't be looking for this or looking for that. We will be understanding that everything's going to be all right. Amen. I think that when I really learned a lesson about how to trust God, was, and, and you all know the story, and I won't go in detail with it, when my daughter was born. At that time, I had not accepted Christ into my life. And she, and, and I had come home early that day because they had a baby shower the next day. And we had in-laws coming in from watching one of different people coming into the house. So I wanted to get home and grill and everything. And she would call me into the bathroom and, and told me there's a problem. And I won't go into details with it. And I remember how panicky it got around the house and her, fortunately her mom and dad was there. But her dad went into the other bedroom which was set up for the sheriff's room as her nursery. And he just got on his knees and began to pray. We were just going nuts. So finally we got into the hospital and everything was so bleak. There was no hope. When the doctor came out and said there's been no heartbeat on your child for 45 minutes. She's, she's dead. And if we don't do something with your wife, she's going to die. And I'm sitting here trying to consume all this, and I didn't want to tell anybody anything. I just needed time to get away. And I remember Ellis coming to me two or three times, and he said, Larry, everything's going to be all right. And I'm sitting here, but you don't know. You don't know that our daughter's, my daughter's already dead. We didn't know if it was a girl or a boy at that time. We didn't have all that technology. And you don't know that she was dying right now. You don't know what's going on. I'm not going to tell you at this moment. And he said, everything's going to be all right. And for about two and a half hours, the agony of, the, of knowing in my head, and finally I called him, I said, I need to talk to y'all. And I told Ellis what was going on. He said, everything's still all right. God assured me. You see, there was something that was different in him than was in me. See, the circumstance was controlling me. But he got hold of the man. Come on. He knew the man that could take care of all things. So what happened was, I get a phone call. And they told me, said I had a little baby girl and she's doing fine and my wife was doing fine. I went through two and a half hours of torment and pain, but yet my father-in-law already had the answer. Why did he have the answer? He did the job right. He was able to sleep through the storm. He had peace when it came. He knew what God could do. God can do that in your life today. Amen? No matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, no matter how big the storm might be, God can help you do it. And of course, you got no else. When it was all said and done, we were up there looking at the sheriff, and I, of course, they had, I had to make a joke, you know, they put the footprints, and I said, boy, she's 
more dirt feet butt cheeks. Just, just messing. When we got done, he grabbed me by the side. He said, he said, son, you need to understand something. He said, I wasn't worried because I knew who the healer, I know who the healer is. He knows who the healer is. You see, he had already submitted himself unto God. And God done the work. I will tell you another story real quickly, but I won't go in detail. I hope he doesn't get mad at me. When Gary was in a bad car accident, and he hit the back of a semi with a Volkswagen van, he had a lot of damage that was done to him. And I remember I, I was talking to Ellis, and I said, you think he's going to be all right? He said, God's already gave me peace. Gary will be all right. And there was really not much hope for Gary, but he already knew. Listen, when you're going through something, you can't see sometimes. But when you have prepared yourself and when the storms come, you can sleep through the storms. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I remember when my mother was dying, and, and we, we were in contact with her for about three days because we had moved from Perry to Apopka. And they didn't have the phones hooked up. And I remember I called my mom, and she was at the hospital, and I talked to her. The last time I spoke to her, she said, Son, I'm ready to go. And I could tell her voice was weak. And she said, I, I'm ready to go. And she said, if God wants to heal me, he can heal me. So automatically, we got up and we, went and we got everything together and we headed to North Carolina. When I got to the hospital, all she could do was smile at me. And I got to pray with her. And I knew that she was going to go and be with the Lord, but God gave me peace to deal with it. Now, what was the difference then than the difference with my daughter? Was I had found favor with God. And think about this. I knew that God would take me through the storm. Yes. And I could go through the storm peacefully. I could handle it peacefully. When my daughter was born, I could not handle it peacefully because I was, oh, I was losing my wife and my child. But my father-in-law was the one that stood in the gap for me. Listen, folks, I'm going to tell you, there's people here today standing in the gap for you. We're praying for you. We're believing that God's going to bless you. And let me tell you something. You want to walk in the favor of God when the storms come. It's not going to bother you like you think it would. God will give you peace to deal with it. Thank you, Lord. But it's amazing sometimes. Things that I don't think is much to it is really big for other people. And sometimes I hear the people talk to me and share some things in their life and things that they're going through. And I think if you would just do this, it could be fixed. If you just would follow God, it would be all right. Amen. But sometimes it's hard to get that across. So I'll stand in that gap. And I'll pray for them. And I'll convince them. And I'll convince them. I'll try to convince them that God is going to help you through. So I found out this. If I obey God's word, and I keep his commandments, all of it. Because John 15, 10, and 11 says, If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandment and abide in His love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Now think of this. We can't pick and choose the ones we like and throw the rest away. We live them, the commandments of God. We live them, we eat them, and we sleep them. Folks, we need a visit from God in America. Amen. We really do. We need God to revive this great country once again. That we get back to the point that we depend upon Him. Because without Him, we have no hope. Without Him, there's no possibility. But with them, all things are possible. All things are possible. I believe that it's time that the body of Christ begin to take a look and begin to get hold of God and begin to walk in the favor of God once again. And let us begin to be blessed by God. But sometimes I think this is what we do. And I'm going to finish this up with this little statement. I want to read this to you. A school teacher lost her life savings in a business scheme that had been elaborately explained by a swindler. When, invest, when the investment disappeared and her dreams were shattered, she went to the Better Business Bureau. Why on earth 
didn't you come to us first, the official asked. Didn't you know about the Better Business Bureau? Oh, yes, said the lady, sadly. I've always known about you, but I didn't come because I was afraid you'd tell me not to do it. <laughs> Think about it. The folly of human nature is that even thought, the folly of human nature is that even thought we know where the answer lies in God's Word, we don't turn there for the fear of what He will say. I think we need to start hearing what God is saying and get ourselves out of the way and watch some things happen. Let me share this with you. When we find favor in God, you want to see the old Pentecostal come out of you right now, if that's okay. I think everybody believes this, just not Pentecostals. We're going to see the blind people, eyes healed. Amen. We're going to see the lame walk. That's right. We're going to see the dead rise. We're going to see the miracles of God begin to happen. Amen? Amen. It happened on the day of Pentecost. It can happen again today. Amen? Amen. So we got to walk in the favor of God. When we lay hands on someone and pray for them, we're going to believe without a doubt that they're healed by the power of God. Hallelujah. Some of you might say, oh, that's old school. That's all right. I still believe in healing. Because it wasn't me that touched my leg, knee. It wasn't a, a surgeon that touched my knee. But it was Jesus that touched my knee. Come on. Amen. 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 And that knee hurt. Yeah. It wasn't even being nice to me. But I remember that morning I felt some heat right here. We were praying. I don't remember what was going on. And I knew that God had touched me. Why did he touch me? Because I walk in his favor. That's the blessings of God. When we get there and the body of Christ gets there, folks, listen. Healing is going to take place. People are going to be delivered. People are going to be... Oh, God, i got to quit this because I'm going to go. The drug addicts are going to get off the drugs. Come on. That's right. Come on. The prostitutes are going to come off the street. All of those that bound up in sin, the healer is going to come. And he's going to touch them. And he's going to set them free. That's what's going to happen when we begin to walk in the favor of God. We're going to see great things happen. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm ready to see Glory. That. I am ready to see that. Yes. I'm going to go to see our minds healed. That we don't have so much junk in our head that drives us crazy. Amen. I mean, there's so many people just boom, 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 boom. Everybody wants to put it in my mind. Right. And this ain't a very big mind to put a lot into it. <laughs> <laughs> and a redneck's laughing at me. <laughs> he says he wants. The thing about that, though, yeah. there's not a lot. And I gotta, I gotta govern what comes in here. Yes. I gotta allow who I listen to. Amen. You know what? If it doesn't measure up to thus saith the word of God, I don't want it in there. Amen. Because I know the devil was just sitting there, right there, and he said, if you would just do this, everything going to be all right. Amen? Yeah. Amen? If you take that wife of yours and just straighten her up, she'd walk better. <laughs> that ain't happening. You can't straighten up something perfect. Amen. Oh, that's good. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, look at Jackie. She knows. Mike understands. Because <laughs> I think women are the most beautiful, perfect people God's ever created. You're right. And I will give them a hand because they're beautiful. Amen. They're a little emotional, but they're beautiful. <laughs> but look, if we can walk in the favor of God, Amen. God can bless us. Will we all stand? If y'all come. I have a big question I'm going to ask, so I, I hope y'all like the question. My question is this. How many like being mean? Sometimes. Look at that. You see, I knew. I knew I could get her to raise that hand. I knew. I did better. But sometimes we allow a lot of things to control our lives. And sometimes we just want to go with the flow. Now, I know that we, we use terminology a lot like, remember the old school, the way they used to do it? Thank God we're not in the old school today. But we're in the new school. Well, I'm kind of old, so. <laughs> I've always been 
kind of a free thinker? Free thinker with the Word, trying to understand what thus saith the Word of God. And what God wants me to do. And to follow Him. But I thank God for the old school. You know why I thank God for the old school? It taught me discipline. Think about it. How many knows that today, oh, I won't get in trouble for this, that if we spank our child with a belt, we're in trouble? I'm in trouble every day. I got spanked with a belt all the time. And nobody ever got in trouble but me. Right. <laughs> you go ahead, but don't get in trouble here. <laughs> but today if we did that, the kids know all the, hey, whoever you call, they'll come and protect you. You know what? The devil has convinced us we can do whatever we want to do. God's going to love us anyway. Well, half of that's true. God does love us, but He expects us to do what's right. And if we don't do what's right, we won't spend eternity with Him. All I want to do is walk as close as I can with the Lord. Because I enjoy being in the favor of God. I enjoy the blessings of God. I enjoy the things that God has for me. I have been a blessed man. I really have been blessed. I look around at some of the things that people go through. God has blessed me and my family. We have truly been blessed. If God got nothing else for me, I would not even... That's okay. Because He gave me the greatest blessing of all when it came into my life to save my soul. Amen. And I know that I'm on my way to heaven. How about you, folks? Amen. But along the way, He just gives me... He does so much for me. He blessed me and my family so much. So I just want to ask you this morning. Who wants to walk in the favor of God? If you do, just nobody look around. Just lift your hand with me if you will. You just want to walk in favor. Say, God, just use me. Just use me. She to lead us into that song, if you will.
He said, but no matter what we come up with, he said, I still want to trust God to take care of all of it. Now listen, in the midst of a storm, in the midst of a storm, he can sleep in peace. They told me, he said, mentally sometimes I go crazy and then I have to get back with God to help me. And I'm going to ask you to pray for him because he's making a decision. The doctor said, if you don't do this, you're not going to live long. It's going to be a hard for death. And I know they'll make a decision, but he still said this, I'm going to do what God tells me to do. He said, that's bottom line. And he said, I'm praying. I said, we're going to be praying for you and the church is going to pray for you. But the point I want to make, he is in the midst of a storm. And in that storm, he's able to sleep. Why? Because he knows he has favor with God. Amen? Amen. God will give him peace. So my question to you today, are you ready to trust God? Are you ready to let God God do the you? If so, I need you to join me in this altar of prayer this morning. And just have a short or brief talk or however you might with the Lord today to get to say, if you would come.